2022 and 2023 have been landmark years for discovering new, fascinating worlds. Last year, NASA surpassed 5,000 confirmed exoplanets. The list is incredibly diverse. It includes rocky super-Earths, gas giants like Jupiter, ice giants like Neptune, and so on. And this is just the beginning. There might be more than a trillion exoplanets in our galaxy alone. But the most important question is, how many of them are habitable, you know, for us? Are there any planets on this list that could have life on them? Or that could be a future home for us? Of course there are. And in 2022-2023, we found as many as five of them. So buckle up and hang on for a wild ride beyond our solar system. The first planet on our list is Wolf 1069b, a boring and stodgy designation. So I'll simply nickname it Wolfie, because hey, who's gonna stop me, NASA? <laughs> a new study conducted by 50 starry-eyed astronomers confirmed something awesome. This exoplanet, Wolfie, which is located just 31 light-years away from us, could potentially be a rocky world. In other words, theoretically, it's a habitable planet. The team behind this discovery used a technique called radial velocity to detect the exoplanet. This is a way scientists study the movements of stars and planets. It's as if when you're playing catch with a friend, as they throw the ball to you, you can see it coming closer and closer. It's kind of like radial velocity. When a planet is moving towards us, it makes the star it orbits appear to be coming closer to us. When the planet is moving away from us, it also makes the star look more distant. Scientists can use this information to figure out what the planet is doing and how big it is. And that's how they found Wolfie. This exoplanet is estimated to be the Earth's size and about one and a third times the mass of our planet. It's orbiting a red dwarf star who I'll call Wolfie's mama. But here's the real kicker. Wolfie orbits within its star's habitable zone which means it's a prime candidate for liquid water to exist on its surface. That's like hitting the exoplanetary jackpot. Ooh, wish I had a ticket. The study estimates that if Wolfie does have an Earth-like atmosphere, temperatures could rise as high as 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which would mean liquid water could pool on the planet's day side. But here's the catch. The exoplanet is tidally locked to its star, meaning that the same side always faces the star. Just imagine, one side of the planet is always basked in the warmth of its star, while the other is in eternal darkness. Like middle school. <laughs> Just kidding. The team behind the discovery believes it's a prime candidate for further studies. But we'll probably have to wait another 10 years for answers. Until then, we'll just have to keep searching the skies with our telescopes and crossed fingers. Our next planet is TOI 700e. Hmm, what's a good nickname? NASA has just discovered a new planet that's set to take the galaxies by storm, or shall we say by orbit. I'll nickname it Toys Were Us. It's almost the size of Earth, most likely has liquid water on its surface, and it's only 100 light years away. We're not talking about a road trip, of course, but this is close enough in the grand scheme of things. Toys Were Us is the fourth planet in its system, and it's got a bit of a short orbit just 28 days to circle its star. Well, at least you would have a birthday every month. <laughs> Hooray! This time, the discovery was made using the transit method. Planets themselves are incredibly small and hard to detect. But when a planet is in front of its star, it blocks some of the light coming from it, making it look a little bit dimmer. As soon as the planet moves away, the star gets brighter again. So, to find the planet, scientists watch very carefully to see if the star's brightness changes. If it does, that means there's probably a planet playing hide-and-seek with us. And that's how they discovered Toys Were Us. The test mission discovered it. It discovered 66 new exoplanets and 2,100 more candidates waiting to be confirmed. TESS has been very busy creating imaging for 75% of the sky. Talk about efficiency! Toys Were Us is located in the optimistic habitable zone, between planets C and D, but it may be tidally locked, just like Wolfie, so we might have to settle for a one-sided water world. The discovery of Toys Were Us is a promising prospect for future follow-up observations, and it demonstrates the potential for TESS to find even smaller exoplanets in the future. Who knows? It may find a new home for humanity among the stars one day. 
or at least a new vacation spot. Next, we have twins GJ1002b and GJ1002c. The galaxy just got a little bit closer to us with the discovery of two exoplanets, which I'll nickname Hansel and Gretel, that are just a stone's throw away from our solar system. That's right, these two Earth-like planets are located less than 16 light-years away, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump in space terms. For comparison, Proxima Centauri b is the closest Earth-mass exoplanet at 4.2 light-years away. So, these two new neighbors are among the closest to us. They both orbit a red dwarf star with barely one-eighth the mass of the Sun. It's quite cool and faint, but that's okay, since both planets are very close to it. Hansel takes 10 days to orbit its star, while Gretel takes just over 21 days. Even more birthdays, I guess. The discovery was made by an international scientific team and was no small feat. The team had to work together with two instruments, Espresso and Carminis. The result? A cafe latte. Nah. What they got were measurements so accurate, you could practically count the number of craters on the planet's surfaces. The big deal is, the planets are located in the habitable zone of their star and are just the right size, making them excellent candidates for future atmospheric studies. The lead author says, Nature seems bent on showing us that Earth-like planets are very common. With these two, we now know seven in planetary systems quite near to the Sun. Who knew our neighbors could be so friendly? In conclusion, the discovery of Hansel and Gretel is a giant leap for humankind. So let's all raise a glass of H2O, or whatever they drink on exoplanets, and celebrate it! The last planet on our list is LP890-9C, which I'll call Bob. This super-Earth, located about 98 light-years away, is roughly 40% larger than our home planet. Moreover, it has a twin, which I'll nickname Ray, which is up to 75% larger than Earth. More space is always good, right? The two planets orbit around the red dwarf star. Unfortunately, Ray is quite hot to the touch, with an estimated temperature of 253 degrees Fahrenheit, so don't touch. Its sibling, Bob, is located in the habitable zone of its star, making it a prime candidate for the potential of life. But let's remember that the actual temperature of the planets depends on their atmospheres. It's possible that Bob, being the outermost planet, has a runaway greenhouse effect, making it more like Venus than Earth. So it might be too hot to be habitable at all. But let's not lose hope yet. The James Webb Space Telescope, launched in December 2021, is on the case. With its cutting-edge technology and powerful instruments, including spectrographs, it can peer into the atmospheres of exoplanets and reveal which ones might be habitable. So let's see what it discovers. This planet has been listed as the second most favorable habitable zone terrestrial planet. Now it's on the list with seven other Earth-like planets, all about 40 light-years away from us. Maybe they'll become our new homes in the future. Maybe we should fix the home we have. But until then, enjoy this moment and celebrate all of these new discoveries. Who knows how many more planets we'll find in the future, considering how much technology develops each year. Thousands? Millions? Meanwhile, Bob and Ray, Hansel and Gretel, Toys Were Us, Wolfie and her mama will all be out there waiting for us. What would the Earth look like if it was born in another solar system? I did a little research for you to find out, and the results were surprisingly wholesome. There are some warm tropics, strong winds, and giant dragonflies. But okay, let me explain from the very beginning. Since 1995, NASA has discovered more than 4,100 planets outside the solar system. Unfortunately, most of them are either flying ice balls like Neptune or gas giants like Jupiter. But there are still as many as 161 planets similar to our Earth. And one of them is very close to us, in the Alpha Centauri constellation. There are three stars in this constellation. Two of them are called Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B. If you live in the Southern Hemisphere, you've probably seen them. They're very bright. Because of that, they look like one big star. They rotate around each other very slowly. 
And there's the third star, chilling around not far from them. It's a teeny tiny red dwarf, Proxima Centauri. It got its name because of its proximity to our Sun. This star is the most interesting one, so let's talk more about it. Proxima Centauri is only 4.5 light years away from us. Oh, and one light year is about 6 trillion miles. Yep. If we went there, it would have taken just a little over 165,000 years of traveling in a space shuttle. Oh, you think that's a lot? For the universe, it's like checking on your fridge. Proxima Centauri is much lighter and much smaller than the Sun. It's also two times colder than the Sun, with a temperature of 3,000 Kelvin. That's why we can't see it without a telescope. On the bright side, though, it will burn for trillions of years. And you don't have to worry that one day it will eat us like our Sun. And yes, our twin planet is located right next to Proxima Centauri. This planet is called Proxima b. Yeah, I know, they got creative with all these names. I hope you won't get confused. It's slightly larger and more massive than the Earth. This planet is located in the habitable zone of Proxima Centauri. It means that there can be water and even some microorganisms there. Yes, it's possible that one day we'll find some life there. But right now, we don't know much about this mysterious planet. It's probably a rocky planet like our Earth and has a similar landscape, but this is just a theory. Who knows what kind of jokes the universe can throw at us? It would be a shame to fly 165,000 years just to stumble upon a giant piece of ice or something. Fortunately, we probably don't have to wait that long. The big brains are now developing a technology that would allow us to move at the speed close to the speed of light. If they succeed, we'll get to Proxima b in just 20 years. But anyway, this video is not just about Proxima b. It's about what would have happened if life had originated not in our solar system, but in Alpha Centauri. What if we were orbiting Proxima Centauri or the other two stars? So now, let's imagine that the Earth has replaced Proxima b. I'm going to call this new planet New Earth. Guess I'm not very creative at naming either. First of all, the orbit. The new Earth must be about 25 times closer to its star than Proxima b is. Otherwise, it would be unimaginably cold. Let's move the planet a little closer. Excellent. The day still lasts 24 hours, but our orbital period is very high. Proxima b revolves around its star in 11 days. But we'll make it in just 8. Hey, a birthday party every week? Sign me up! Oh, hold on, there's another problem. You see, Proxima Centauri is a flare star. This means that sometimes, just out of nowhere, it throws out some stellar winds. These winds carry around a bunch of ionized particles, which then settle on the planets. Yeah, our Sun also does that, but Proxima Centauri tries to finish us off 2,000 times harder than our Sun. So the radiation levels are off the scale, to say the least. Don't worry, it's fine. All we need are incredibly strong magnetic fields. They will help us create a very thick atmosphere that can protect us from the Proxima Centauri's tantrums. So now it's going to be very warm. Or not. Another problem. Scientists are still not sure how exactly Proxima Centauri's planets rotate around it. What if they turn out to be tidally locked, like our moon? Then one half of the new Earth will be a frying pan, and the other half will be some frosty deserts. Oh, it's fine, we'll just settle down somewhere in the middle. Didn't expect that I would ever say this, but it will definitely be warm at the North Pole. And if we're lucky with the rotation, we'll just get a cozy, warm planet. The average temperature is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and there aren't any extreme temperatures. On the new Earth, we have much more water. The weather is generally pretty crazy, some very strong winds and quite destructive rains that can go on for quite a long time, but you can adapt. Temperature changes are much more noticeable in the mountains. Just like on Earth, the higher you climb, the colder it gets, except it's very cold right here at the top. Because of this, the mountains and hills have jungles below and snow-covered deserts on the tops. But in general, it's almost like the Earth's tropics. The flora is very rich, the trees are very low, 
but lush. The thick atmosphere also makes flying easier, so there are a lot of large flying animals, like dragonflies with a wingspan of 16 feet. Uh-huh, moving on. The sky here is much lighter than that on Earth and very cloudy. Sometimes it may seem completely white. But the starry night is beautiful and bright. There are four suns. Our main one is Proxima Centauri. We can also see two bright Alpha Centauri stars. And finally, our old sun, which looks like a bright, distant star. I'll allow you to shed a tear for the old Earth. There's a few planets near us, like Proxima Centauri C. The host star is surrounded by two belts of cosmic dust, so get ready for some gorgeous, colorful night views. So what we have in the end is a little crazy, but a beautiful green planet. I personally wouldn't mind moving there already. What about you? Write in the comments. Alright, so now we know what would have happened if our Earth had been born near Proxima Centauri. What about the other two stars? Unfortunately, we won't be able to rotate near two stars at the same time. Scientists suspect that Alpha Centauri A and B have some kind of common planet that jumps from one orbit to another. But it's probably very cold. Let's choose Alpha Centauri A. Just like on the new Earth, here our average temperatures are about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But now, the temperature variation is quite large. It goes from negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit at the South Pole to 113 degrees Fahrenheit at the equator. Eh, we'll be fine close to the north. The day is still 24 hours, and the orbital period is one year and one month. It's almost the same for the Alpha Centauri B, but the orbital period is about half a year. Other conditions are very similar to those on Earth. Changes in the seasons are almost not noticeable. The temperatures don't change much either. No matter where we settle down, the neighboring star will be clearly visible, but we probably won't see Proxima Centauri. And that's about it. Of course, all this assumes perfect conditions. Just like on Earth, one slightest change, whether it's a thin atmosphere or a bigger distance from the star, and it won't end well. We got really lucky with our Earth. But even so, the chances of finding a habitable planet are very high. Even with the tiniest possibility, there will be about 15 million planets in our universe that we can find life on. Ah, Earth. The third rock from the sun. The blue planet. You get it. Its atmosphere is made up of around 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. A nice balance for any living creatures to breathe. The weather here is also perfect for life to exist, unlike places like Saturn, Mercury, or any other celestial object in our solar system. We have the troposphere to thank for that. It's the densest part of the atmosphere on our planet and is 5 to 9 miles wide. It's the layer of the atmosphere that always affects our weather and secures the right conditions for life to exist and to have bodies of water. Earth is just sitting in its orbital path, minding its own business, revolving around the Sun, until BAM! Venus and Mars swoop in and spoil the fun. No one wants to leave poor Earth alone. These two relatively large celestial objects moving toward Earth will have dire consequences for our planet, starting with changes in its orbiting trajectory path. The planet's orbits in the solar system have to maintain the right balance so that nothing goes haywire. Of course, if any large object approaches Earth, it would throw our orbiting path off course. The planets will revolve around each other, which will cause plenty of natural disasters on our lanes. This will also affect our rotation timing, potentially slowing it down. Days will not flow, but drag by. Animals that rely on daytime will need to readjust their biological clocks. Nocturnal animals will also need to figure out how to cope with the long nights. Humans have adjusted pretty well to the 24 hours a day timing. Time itself is just a human construct to measure things. We'll have a tough time sleeping and adjusting to the stretched day. Marine animals rely on the natural current flow to migrate around the oceans. With Mars and Venus crashing the party, it looks like they will also need to find new paths. 
birds migrating to other lands throughout the year, we'll also be confused and not know what to do. In general, the Earth's temperature will rise, and massive heat waves and permanent climate changes will occur. This brings us to our next issue, the heat. The radical temperature rise will turn everything into a barren desert. It'll be summer all year long, especially if Venus is in the picture. Most of the planet will dry up and won't be suitable for growing crops. Venus is hot, I mean really hot. Even though it's not the closest planet to the Sun, it's still the hottest. The temperatures on Venus are close to 900 degrees Fahrenheit, which will melt you like an ice cube. The lands on Venus are generally flat, probably due to the temperatures. It's mainly hot because its atmosphere is thick and traps the hazardous gases inside. If Venus inches its way towards us, it'll invite those gases to our atmosphere and compromise it. Mars, or the red planet as we know it, is very cold. That might stay the same if it starts rotating around us. It's also home to the largest dormant volcano in our solar system, which makes Mount Everest look like a tiny bush compared to a tree. With so much instability, it might just wake up one day and spew out molten lava. Mars has a very thin atmosphere, which makes the planet chilly. Its gravity is quite similar to ours. It's actually very cold and has ice caps in the poles covered with carbon dioxide. The same's true for Mercury. You can only last there as long as you can hold your breath and be in the sweet spot between the sunrise and sunset. The three planets orbiting each other will eventually collide. It's just a matter of time. And the moon, just hanging out like a fly on the wall, will be so insignificant that something will eventually throw it off course and another planet will capture it to its orbit. Or, in the most dire case, it will collide with one of the two intruding planets. Earth will experience extreme tidal waves like nothing before. The two new planets revolving around Earth will cause a major imbalance, making our gravity shift out of control. Each tidal wave will be bigger than the previous one and will cover the dry land. Plenty of little scattered islands in the oceans will be completely submerged. Coastal cities and towns will also be home to fish. Flat countries in general will need boats to get around. Dams and dikes won't be enough to stop the water from coming in. Everyone needs to move towards higher ground to escape the floods. With the climate getting hotter, the polar caps will melt like ice cream on a sweltering summer day and add to the water level rising. Within a few months, the whole Arctic will be nothing but liquid. But wait, there's more! The crust will wear out due to the instability of the Earth's surface and fluctuating gravity. The Earth's crust is mainly made up of oxygen, which means we're basically walking on air. We might experience more earthquakes than before, and dormant volcanoes will wake up from their deep slumber. The skies will be covered in ash, making flights impossible. No one can travel by sea or by air. Importing and exporting will become history. The overall climate will get hotter, just like in Venus. The three planets orbiting each other and their huge mass might even unintentionally welcome other planets and celestial bodies to join the party. So, what if Jupiter decided to turn up? Now, Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. To give you an idea, the Earth would be just the size of a grape if Jupiter were the size of a basketball. It also has the largest storm we can perceive. That's known as the Red Spot, a place twice the size of Earth that has hurricane-like storms that have been going on for hundreds of years. Now, by the time you're done watching this video, you can expect the storm to still be going at it. Since the planet is huge, gravity must be quite strong here. It also has many moons, some of them of our little Earth. There will be no room for any proper space among the planets. Jupiter's moons will be thrown off course and latch onto other planets around. Some of the moons might collide with each other, causing massive debris to be displaced all over the place. The gravity of the planetary party will attract comets to enter the atmosphere, potentially crashing down on us. Oxygen levels will deplete, so the Earth's crust crumbling will continue. It'll rip open the ozone layer, causing heavy strokes of ultraviolet waves to enter our atmosphere. We won't be able to step outside for too long without some protective gear and oxygen tanks. Human civilization will change drastically. 
We'll all live in sheltered containers that will provide clean air and safe and filtered sun rays. The shelters will be sturdy enough to withstand frequent earthquakes. We will grow only enough crops to sustain ourselves until we leave the Earth. Since it'll only be a matter of time before the planets collide, the next step would be to create large rocket ships to fly us out of the Earth. With Mars, Venus, and Jupiter revolving close to us, it won't be easy to do so. All the space debris will be blocking us from exiting the space zone area. The only safe place outside this region will be many millions of miles away, where only single planets exist. They may or may not have the conditions to host life, but humans will have the technology to land just about anywhere with similar gravity and construct the right shelters. Eventually, Mars, Venus, Earth, and Jupiter will collide with each other and break like eggs, like a big space omelet. Don't forget the moon's crashing and breaking in the mix, but we'll already be far, far away by then, hopefully.